Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video today about how to get rid of a chip in the edge of your blade. I was cutting some uh, cardboard templates the other day with my Spyderco Endura 4 and I ran into a screw on the workbench I was working on and it put a very small chip in the edge of the blade. So I figured I might as well make a quick video to show you how to get it out. The chip in this blade is, is almost so small that you can't even see it, but it's there. Um, I think I can get it on the camera. But if I can't, you'll just have to trust me and know that it's there. So let's get set up and we'll get started. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be using a relatively coarse 400 and 800 grit combination stone I bought from Amazon because we're gonna be doing a lot of grinding and a lot of reprofiling on this blade. Having a nice coarse stone is really essential for what we're gonna be doing here. The first thing we wanna do is assess the blade and locate our chip. To aid in locating small chips, one thing you can do is run your fingernail along the edge of the blade. You will easily be able to feel where the chips are located. Just be careful when doing this, especially when the blade is sharp. Once we located our chip, or chips, we want to start on the chip closest to the handle. We can then start at this spot and work the blade 90 degrees to the stone, grinding our chip out. You want to grind out your chip completely and reprofile the cutting edge to the tip of the blade. Using a cardboard template, let me show you just what's going on. So we have our blade and we have our chip. Essentially, we want to remove metal on the stone until we have reached the chip's deepest point. Slightly reprofiling the grind from just behind the chip all the way out to the tip of the blade. You can see the original size bevel at the back of the blade and how much smaller the tip is in comparison now that we have ground out our chip. Now say you had a chip anywhere on the blade. The reason you don't want to just grind this one spot on the stone is because you will end up with a low spot on the blade. This is bad because when we resharpen the blade later on, this low spot will not come in contact with the stone and thus will not be sharpened. But if we grind from slightly behind the chip and feather it out towards the tip of the blade, you will not create a low spot. Then all we have to do is put a new bevel on the knife. Putting a new bevel on the knife, or what's called reprofiling, isn't as scary as it sounds. If you use a relatively coarse stone, this process is really not that time consuming. Reprofiling this super hard ZDP 189 blade only took me about 7 minutes, which really is not that bad in the grand scheme of things. The most important thing when you're reprofiling is to maintain your angle, constantly checking to make sure that the bevels on both sides of the knife are even and that you fully apex right in the middle of the blade. I always apex on my coarsest stone. It's really a pain in the butt once you get to the 8000 grit stone and realize that you haven't apexed. That means that you have to go all the way back and start over again. And this is what our edge looks like after reprofiling on a 400 grit stone. Technically, if you were to strop the knife here, we could end up with a sharp knife. But we might as well just take it all the way to the end and restore the knife back to its original condition. So next I move to the 800 grit side of my combination stone and work the knife on the stone till all the scratches from the previous stone were removed, at least to the naked eye. And this is what the edge looks like after an 800 grit stone. Now there was a burr hanging off to one side of the blade that I could feel with my fingernail and the only place that I was able to get it to show up on video was right here. These three little specks of light are actually the burr hanging off to one side. It almost looks like there's a couple chips there in the blade, but that's not the case. That's actually the burr. Now moving on to my 1000 grit Norton stone, I continue working the edge until all the scratches from the previous 800 grit stone were removed. And here's what the edge looks like off of a 1000 grit Norton stone. Now know that there still is a burr on this edge that I can feel with my finger, but it's just not showing up on camera. Next, I move on to the 4000 grit Norton stone. Now one thing I'd like to mention is that I think that the jump from 1000 grit to 4000 grit is a little bit much. It's nice to have a stone in between those two grits because once you start getting into a mirror polish, you can still see some of those 1000 grit scratches remaining in the edge, at least under some magnification. To the naked eye, it just looks like a mirrored edge. And here's what the edge looks like after a 4000 grit Norton stone. Again, you can see some of those lower grit scratches coming through our 4000 grit edge. These scratches are impossible to see without any kind of magnification, unless you're Superman. And finally, on to the 8000 grit Norton stone. This is really nothing more than a polishing stone. You can see some black streaks on the stone where it is cutting and removing a little bit of metal, but let me tell you, it is not much. You really can't do any kind of significant metal removal on the stone, and you really have to treat it as a polishing only stone. And here's the edge off of the 8000 grit stone, and you can really see some of those lower grit scratches still coming through. However, this is an absolute mirror polish in real life, and those scratches can only be seen under magnification. Next, we'll put it on the strop. We're going to strop with extremely light pressure, 
and an extremely low angle, or a lower angle than we sharpened with. And believe it or not, even an 8000 grit polishing stone will leave a very small microscopic burr along the edge. One stropping tip to remember is that the finer the stone that you finish on, the less pressure you need to add on the strop. The coarser stones seem to leave a larger burr, thus requiring a little more aggressive stropping to remove them. On finer stones, you really do want light pressure and a very low angle. And here's what the edge looks like after stropping, and you can still see some of those coarse grit scratches coming through. But in real life, this is an absolute mirror polish, and you cannot see any of those scratches with the naked eye. But how does it cut paper? And does it whittle hair? Just because a knife has a mirror polish doesn't mean that it's sharp. If your knife isn't apexed, it's not going to be sharp, regardless of how shiny it is. Even a knife sharpened on a 220 grit or 400 grit stone can easily be hair whittling sharp. Although you probably wouldn't want to shave your face with it. It wouldn't be the smoothest shave in the world. Just remember, when removing chips, always feather the edge out to the tip. If the chip is all the way in the back end of the blade, that means you have to grind down the chip to its lowest point and then feather that all the way to the tip. Otherwise, you will end up with a low spot in the blade. This is one reason I don't recommend removing chips by simply working them out while sharpening. It is much easier to control regrinding the edge, actually regrinding, at a 90 degree angle to the stone, rather than while trying to maintain an angle at the same time while sharpening. The same amount of metal is removed regardless. So basically, that's the method I use to remove any nicks or chips in the edge of a blade, and to bring it back to its original condition. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.